Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and today I'm going to be reviewing Kyle Purnell's Download Blank Inside. So before we go on, can you please, and I can't stress this enough, like and subscribe. Yeah, I know every YouTube person says that, uh, but it's for a reason. It makes all the difference and makes me know you are there. Uh, the other thing is, could you go and check out my card magic course? That's cardmagiccourse.com. Uh, that's my online course full to the brim with loads and loads of moves. And uh, I've just recorded a couple of tricks today because I've just got a lovely bit of permission um, from Richard Kaufman to uh, include some tricks from his books and a couple from Daryl's books. So I'll be going ahead and putting those in very, very shortly. If you've got any questions about that, do let me know. And it's a great way to support the channel uh, because as everybody that's on YouTube, well, mostly I do this for nothing. I'm not affiliated. Yes, Spanish Link. Uh, share the videos and the blog, which is very kind of them, but this is a solo project. So if you could do any of that stuff, that would be lovely. Right, I'll stop banging on about that now and get on with a review. I was uh, super nervous about this. I Somebody asked me to review it, or a couple of people actually said, oh, can you review this? And I thought, well, I'll have a look at it. And I, I read the copy. And I was halfway down reading the copy and I was just going, this isn't for me. This is any, anything that involves numbers, counting, I, I don't like it. I can't, I, can't, I can't stress how bad at maths I am. I'm getting better, weirdly enough, because I've made myself sit and sort of learn this, this thing and a couple of others. But I really, under pressure, if I have to do anything with numbers, I just go blank and, and I, I panic. And I, I used to even do that with the Invisible Deck. I spoke about this in my ID360 review. Um, when I was younger, and not now, because I'm, I'm more relaxed, but when I was really panicky about doing magic tricks, I had to stop doing Invisible Deck because I couldn't add up to 13. You know, it's uh, it's that bad. So, um, 13 or 14, God, was... sorry, mental block, again, see, numbers can't, <laughs> can't function. Um, but I, I read the copy of this, and it didn't, the copy didn't really appeal to me. It was kind of, someone says a number, then you do this, then you do that, and I was like, I don't know, but then a couple of people said, have a look at it. And I looked at it and I went, oh, right, it's, it's, it's one of the rare occasions where I think the copy doesn't sell the trick quite as well as it could. Uh, the, the demo on the video, when you watch it, is quite long. So, in, and that's quite a good thing. It's quite a brave thing to do, you know. Like It's got a really nice, sort of uh, relaxed presentation. So, again, some people might have very little kind of attention span. I'm not being called just people. Oh, there's so much to watch on on online now that you know do things in a couple of seconds to go to something else uh but still and it, it did so i thought wow that's actually really fooled me and i know it's not all about fooling it's about entertaining but it kind of entertained me and fooled me and i thought i actually really like that trick it uses numbers in a different way and it wasn't in the way i thought even after sort of reading the copy so um i got hold of it and uh panicked because i thought i've got to learn it now because someone sent it to me and today i performed it for a lay person and i was properly nervous I was really really nervous because I'd practice and practice and practice and and I still and, and don't get me wrong you'll learn this it's, it's easy I think why does he need all that practice but I really do and I was just thinking oh, I'm gonna get it wrong so I stripped it all down I didn't do a very impressive presentation or anything like that I just did the trick bog standard no presentation not even after the stuff in the routine and it still got a really good reaction. And I was like, oh, right, there's something in this. So um, the, the, the trick is, if you haven't seen it, you uh, get someone to name a number between 1 and 30. There's a presentation with this, but I'll just give you a number. You deal out two packs of cards on the table, and that's what turned me off as well, because anything where you're dealing out cards worries me. But if you do it properly, it's great. And you can talk while you're doing it. You're dealing everything out. Um, and then you get them to shuffle the cards together, or you shuffle the cards together, um, and you produce three cards or four cards or two cards or five depending on the number that they say I turn them over and it adds up to their chosen number which weirdly enough gets a reaction to me that's like a death knell to me it's I think as the magicians everything that when someone names a number adds up but but really really it does get a good reaction so and that's great and then you turn over the rest of the cards and every other card is completely blank and it's completely examinable and that's the bit. So even without the, I've added up the number between one and 30 with the cards, um, which gets a surprising reaction, you've got this really lovely kicker, which isn't expected. So uh, that's the routine. Have a look at it. The 
So the worry for me was the maths, and I read on the Vanishing Ink site, someone said, is there any maths in this? And Kyle had said, yeah, there is, but I'm really bad at maths, and if I can do it, anybody can do it. Now, I've heard that before. You know, I've heard, I've read that in books, and then read it and just go, there's just no way I'm going to be able to do this under fire, under pressure. Um, I'm leaving it alone. But when I started playing with this, it, it's, it's intuitive. You, you don't have to do much maths at all. You have to basically learn four or five numbers, and you know, I can't explain, but... Once you've done that, you can do the trick. And my panic was basically all, all perceived. It wasn't, I knew, I think that nothing was going to go wrong. So uh, other than that, it's a, it's a very easy trick. So the good things about this are it's easy. And it really is. There's not much in this. And yes, the way he does it, he, he does the, the maths bit, which you really don't see. And then there is a little kind of bit of sleight of hand. I say that very um loosely because it's not a difficult slight but there's something you have to do that requires a bit of misdirection um but as well as being easy it's got this really lovely inbuilt misdirection and i always think of the cups and balls for this if you want to learn misdirection learn the cups and balls because it's all done for you now as long as you put your hands in the places it tells you to put your hands at that time and say this thing when you do that they will not see those final loads go in and i talk about this a lot because it's a trick that you it's a good example of so many different um areas of magic really, misdirection, misdirection being one of them. So this routine has everything. So the little bit of misdirection you need for the thing, which I totally didn't notice in the demo, you are gonna get away with straight away if you just say what he says. It's about, he says like, every, get your fingers in a pencil movement and push the cards together like this. And you've got all the time in the world. Now you'll notice in, in my video, I didn't even do any of that. I didn't do any of the shuffling stuff. I didn't, I, <laughs> It didn't make much sense, really, because I was I just wanted to practice the basic move. So I was, I was sitting in the cafe and I wasn't going to do it. I was practicing it in the cafe and I just went, oh, I'm just going to I'm going to get over my fear and do it. I said, Martin, come over here. And he said, the guy that makes the coffee in the cafe. Um, I said, sit there. I'm going to try this trick. And I've been totally honest with him. And I, and I, I tried a different pre presentation to cover myself. So rather than doing all this gambling presentation, I said, look, this trick requires maths. And I'm really terrible at maths. And I go totally blank. Uh, when I think of numbers. And he was like, yeah, yeah, me too. It's weird, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, and that's the presentation because that gives me all the time in the world to do the dealing and the counting thing because I'm actually, well, I'm, I'm realistic. I'm pretending to look and I think they've got, the cards have got marked backs. So I'm looking at the cards as I'm having to think of the, the mathematical process. And, that, and it, it's totally justified that I'm actually thinking about it as I'm putting it down. Uh, and then I turn over the cards and that's still impressive. And then the it makes it even more impossible, this, this ending, because it's not expected. So if you're worried about the maths, use the presentation, which gives you a reason to really take your time on those last few cards, and I think that's there, and, and it's totally justified. Uh, so it's easy. It, if, if I can do it, really, and I mean this 100%, an idiot can do it with the numbers. Um, it's, it gets a really good reaction. It's, it's kind of angle-proof, because Carl gives you what, this bit that you have to do to make it it work. Um, you can use your pockets, you can you do it sitting at a table. And I actually did the sitting at a table one, which, I, which just, again, all the time in the world to do what I needed to do. Um, it uses blank cards. And Andy Nyman said this on the Magician's podcast. I think it was Andy Nyman. He said, we forget as magicians how impressive it is to do, to do a trick with blank cards. There's something quite beautiful. You know, that blizzard, it's based on the blizzard trick, which is the Dean Dill thing, wasn't it? But it's a, it's a really really beautiful thing for a lay person it's, it's really striking and then when they can pick them up and they're all generally blank blank uh, it's great so it's so the angles are absolutely fine um you are going to need a table obviously but you don't have to do the three card four card flashy production i just literally dealt them out um because i was <laughs> convinced i might have got it wrong and it still got the reaction um it doesn't use a deck switch or anything like that so you, it's very easily resettable you know if you go from one table to the other you're going to be able to reset it and it's a very easy reset like i said it's intuitive you can you don't have to remember that the numbers go in an order and and all that kind of thing uh, that's what i say and the, the download's really really good uh, he's very likable carl he's, if you've seen his other stuff it's it's quite imaginative it's quite qu quirky and he's got this really quirky style and he gets away with that kind of longer presentation i, I kind of shortened it down 
um, a little bit. But really, I'm, I'm really not, I don't get one, that many one trick downloads, but I, f I really like this. And you know, the best thing about it is it's not a pick a car trick. It's a really different kind of trick. And yes, I know we've, we've seen it as magicians before, but when you get cards out and do something different like that, people really, really enjoy it. Uh, the challenges with it are the mass as well. You know, you're gonna have to learn something, but very easy. Um, you do kind of need a table, really. I mean, you can, you can obviously do it in someone's hand, um, but I think it's nice on the table to spread them out to do that spread. But you, you, you can definitely, you will be able to do this, uh, find a way of doing it if you really wanted to. But I, I like the table thing. Um, what else? I mean, there's really no, no, nothing else. I mean, if you, I mean, look at the trick. If you like it, that's what you get. It's a very honest uh, download. You're going to be able to do it if you're a card magician. Uh, and I, I think you will do it. So um, no real negatives for me, no massive challenges. I'm really glad I spent the bit of time I had to learn it and it is something that I am gonna take out because it isn't just a pick a card trick and, and it's got a really, really surprise ending. Oh, very importantly, God, nearly forgotten, this is the big thing, right? You have to, if you want to do the blank deck bit, you have to buy a blank deck. Right, that's the only f additional thing you'll need on it. But he does have a presentation where you don't have to a presentation where you don't have to buy a blank deck, and uses uh, crosses on the cards. So you add them up, and every other card's got a black cross on it. So you can practice it and use it without the blank deck. I, I recommend getting one for like five dollars, uh, five pound or whatever, because it, it really adds to it. And, and a lot of you probably got one at home sitting in your drawer, so it's a great reason for that. So you just need uh, you need six random cards. Um, from, a, from a deck, I mean, card that you'll be able to get from a normal deck, as long as they match the blank deck and a blank deck. Uh, that's a really important thing. Uh, so, uh, thanks very much. Any questions, like I said, thanks for vanishing for sharing it, and uh, please like and subscribe. Go and check out Card Magic Course, ask me any questions about that as well, and have a great one. Thank you very, very much.